Hey, this is Archie Roach back at my kitchen table with the kitchen table yarns with uh, uh, singer-songwriters and uh, and uh, about you know, talking to them, yarning to them about you know uh, uh, what inspires their music and where they're from and uh, what they're doing and, and uh, it's been great so far and today we're, we're talking to uh, a woman by the name of Lydia, Lydia Fairhall, who's prolific uh, singer songwriter, and uh, I just wish I was as prolific as she is at the moment. <laughs> but we might get into that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just like to say, you know, um, welcome to the kitchen table yarns, uh, Lydia. It's good to have you. Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute blessing. That's good. It's, yeah, so just, I suppose we kick off just a little bit of your background, if, if you, whatever you want to, want to, want to, want to uh, divulge. Yeah. Uh, yep. And, uh, you know, um, where you grew up or, 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 or uh, you know, when you, your mob or, or, you know, where you're from, your, your background. And, 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 uh, and then we'll get into talking about the music or, or what you love, love to listen to as well when you were younger. Yeah. So before you started to create your own music. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, that sounds like a good place to start. Um, my great grandmother was born on the mission at Karua. So just north of Newcastle, Warramai country, beautiful saltwater river country. Yeah. And uh, she married a Punjabi man. And like a lot of women at that time, because of, you know, how things were, she yeah. absolutely lent into that Indian identity as much as she could to keep her family together. And, um, yeah, her and him ended up working up and down the railway line. So she left Karua at a young age and they were, it was a hard life, you know. They were laying that railway line, bringing their kids up, setting up camps, and maybe moving like every couple of weeks sometimes. So it was a really transient life, a displaced kind of life, you know. But eventually they did end up settling uh, in the Northern Rivers. And right. I was speaking to my granddad last year, who's, he's a white fellow, but he, he passed away last year and he was 93. Right. But, you know, um, at the end of that journey, all the memories come back and the old stories come back, you know. And he remembers being out the back of Wadeville and um, his family were big horse people, you know, love the rodeo, love all the stock work and um, had a property out there. I think they were leasing the property and he went to school to grade two. So he remembers being at school in those extensive schooling years up until he was eight. Wow. And he, he said to me, oh, I remember these every couple of months, these three tall, dark, skinny girls would come in from the bush yeah. and they'd sit in that little school. They were really curious about what was happening at the school and they'd, prob they'd get some, a couple of supplies and stuff and then disappear for a few months. But he put, as kind of time went on, he put it all together and realised that they were actually camping along the river out the back of the property that he lived on. Oh, okay. But then, um, yeah, and then 18, month, 18 years later, He's down at Brunswick Heads and he meets this beautiful woman and they have a wild, passionate, tumultuous, tragic love affair <laughs> that results in five children and all of the five kids um, ended up being in my granddad's custody because the grog got the better of my grandma and, and things were not real good there. But he realised as he was getting to know her family that she was the baby sister of those three girls that would come in and visit from the bush. And she was born in a tent by the river at the back of his property. Wow. How's that? <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Isn't that amazing? All those little connections. That's right. Yeah. So, I know. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. What, what did you have, you know, when you were younger, did you have much, or your grandfather, or, or, or when you was living, did you? 
did you have any sort of the, uh, I know uh, access to to any music uh, that you like to listen to, or was it just what other people listen to? That you got in? Yeah, um, my dad is a big lover of music. He um, bless him, he can only play about three chords, but he stretches those three chords. <laughs> It's nearly every song, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's somebody that just has so much enthusiasm for music, and yeah. we would go, we would go camping a lot. And um, he's he's such an anarchist; it's no surprise that he ended up with my mum, really. Um, and he, I remember sitting down. I was about four years old, and we were camping on the Murray because we lived in Victoria for just a few short years there. Yeah, yeah. And um, he said to me you need to pay close attention. Something's about to happen and you're going to really want to remember this moment. He was very serious. Yeah. And he ended up playing me this song and going through the whole song and teaching me the little counter melodies. And it was War Is Over by John Lennon. Yeah. And bless him, dad was so passionate about this. He's like, this is the music of the revolution. It's not just music, it's much bigger than this. And I think that really, stayed with him you know he was um obviously as a non-indigenous person the struggle was so different but um he really instilled in me this love for the singer songwriter genre and also really good pop you know good melodies beautiful um chord voicings and, and chord progressions yeah. and that kind of evolved into uh really exploring a lot more folk music okay. so i um you know all that uh, Arnie DeFranco, uh, Gillian Welsh. Yeah. Um, I remember Tracy Chapman's first two albums. Wow. And, wow. and and just, I remember standing in front of the TV, I was watching Rage, I think I was about five or six. And she had this really simple film clip, but she was playing Fast Car. Fast and I remember just standing there as a child, just sobbing, listening to this beautiful melody and these beautiful words more than anything. and. Yeah. So her first two albums were huge for me. And obviously um, every, everybody's going to say this, but you, your music, not, not just your music, but who you are as a person, you know, you're, you're a handful of people that I know that has been through everything in this world and has every reason to be angry and be, you know, live in sorrow but somehow you've taken that story and become an uplifter and a peacemaker and your music unites humanity and, and unites us. So thank you so much. It's just the biggest gift. No, it's a, yeah, no, I, I think that's, you know, that's part of what we do as, as artists. Uh, I don't know what many other artists think, but I think we, 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 we actually have that. Uh, we have, uh, whatever you believe or whatever is it's sort of it's a responsibility uh if yeah. we're gonna you know music that have to uh, create music or songs that people listen to you know it's uh you've got to sort of i suppose give them something uh to to, to find that uh strength because you know like this people go through so much hardship in life for one reason or another and uh as a musician, I think it's part of our responsibility to try and try and uplift people in whatever way we can. You know, but, um, uh, yeah, so that that's all. You know, you, you never. When I first started out writing songs, you know, you're never really gonna. You, you don't really think that oh, this song is a, or my music is gonna really you know, help people or this. You don't think that at all. You just hope that somebody likes the song. You know. And, uh, yeah, the way it's it's turned out, and I've, and I've grown uh, through my music, but uh, through the years, uh, I've grown as well. And I've, and I've realised that a lot of my music and songs, uh, uh, or, or creativity, uh, how I create, has has grown as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does that process look like for you, Uncle? You. Are you somebody that writes songs over a few months or is it a really fast process for you? Or? I wish it was fast, but no. <laughs> it, 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 it takes a while uh, yeah. to write a song. And, and sometimes you just, you, you're thinking of 
you, know, you have ideas or you're thinking of a story or, or even a lyric or just a, a something you've heard from somebody, you know, just sitting down talking to somebody. I find that, you know, when you, when you have a yarn with somebody sitting down and uh, there's so much sort of like a, a beauty in, in the way people talk, their own, their own character comes out, you know, and, and, and uh, some things they say, you know, can, can, can stay with you and actually become a song. I've done that before. But yeah. um yeah, it's 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 for me for me it's different. It's never it's never one thing. And uh, you know, it, it can be different in other ways where, where I'm talking to somebody, or I'm just sitting down listening, listening to I don't know, uh, nature, the world, the earth. Uh, yeah. or or just listening to you know, go inside yourself and just listen listen to to, to to yourself and your, your your spirit. So it's different all the time, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I Is like, there uh, a... Right? No, you go. You go. No, I'm, I'm just saying, but I, I, I liked how you explained... I was looking at something there and you explained where, where you find song and how it can, you know, you, know you, you have a window open most of the time and when you're out there with Bush there, you know, and... Uh, songs come to you so is that still the case yeah yeah it's literally a window and it's this it overlooks the bush lots of little birds little wrens and finches and things like that hanging around and i'll just get a feeling but it's the same same as you maybe a day or two before that i'll be having a conversation with somebody or i'll read something and there might even sometimes just be one word yeah and for some reason it triggers this whole creative response. It's a, such a spiritual thing. It's so hard to explain. But um, yeah, I'll sit at that window with the guitar and it's almost like the song just flies through the window, you know? Mm. And it used to be a really slow process, but now since I've had kids, there's really no other way to put it than it's just like fast and dirty now because mm. I have like maybe five minutes or I just have to get it done, you know? Yeah, and it, yeah. It's um, hopefully I'll get back to that slower way of, of doing things um, sooner or later. But always the kids will like, because they, they pick up on that energy, you know, so they gravitate and like, ah, quickly got to get this out. Yeah, yeah. So always make sure I record it so I can come back to it when I've got more time. But that initial burst is really, yeah, it's such a spiritual experience. It's really quick. And I, it, out of anything in the whole world, and especially out of anything to do with music, songwriting is the bit, bit that I absolutely love the most. It always puts me back into alignment with my spirit and who I really am. Well, it's, it's, you know, well my first, you know, couple, the kitchen table is actually is where I wrote a lot of my songs. Um, yeah. Like, like you know, album like Charcoal Lane, uh, Jamie Dreaming, and others, I wrote them at the kitchen table. It was, it was just, and uh, it had that, I think because of that, uh, that communal spirit around the kitchen table was where meals were prepared and uh, children, yeah, they were running, you know, my children were running around when they were little, you know, making all yeah. sorts of noise and that, but that was, that created this, 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 uh, this atmosphere that created this, uh, uh, this place where you, where I could actually, I felt comfortable to, to write uh, songs and uh, because it, it just felt right, a place to be, you know, yeah, this, yeah. This is who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm family orientated. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, there's no better place than the kitchen table where, where there's so much activity, family meals are prepared, uh, cups of teas ahead, conversation, and children running around. You know, uh, drive your man. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because I sent um my producer before I made this this new album that I'm slowly bringing out at the moment, I sent him some roughs of about 30 songs that we had to choose from. Yeah. And I was like, I'm really sorry, but you're just going to have to deal with this because in the background is exactly what you're talking about. There's people coming and going. Yeah. There's, you know, a koala screaming out of the tree. The kids are interrupting. I'm like, just ignore that bit. You can hear the songs. And he was so good about it, bless him. I think we even used a few little bits from, from the kids in there. Eventually it all came full circle. But 
it's a beautiful thing sharing that um, process with other people as well. Well, that's right. You know, it's just, it's not. Yeah, you know, it's it, it it's life. You know, you have that happening around you, and as you know, like you, you can't sort of, even though you might be creating or writing something, uh, a song, uh, it's still going on around you, and there's nothing much you can do about that. So you yeah, know, if, if you if you use that, that's what I have through the years as well. Um, yeah, to 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 create or just say, well, this is this is how it is, like you said. You know, like, uh, you have to, uh, you have to excuse the, you know, the children running around, or the koala, yeah. know, or the birds, or cockatoos, creatures, or whatever. You know, but but that's that's the way it is. That's how, that's where I am, and uh, I'm in this place. Uh, but even though I'm in this place where, where everything else is happening around me, I can still create. So that's good. Yeah, and I think that's one of those beautiful metaphors for life as well. You know, you can always find peace amongst the chaos. And and that process of writing in the middle of the daily family life is kind of like that. Because if you waited for the perfect moment in life to feel happy or for all the conditions to be right, you'd be wait we'll be waiting the rest of our lives. Yeah, yeah. And so it it is that um because music for me is so in extricably linked to my spirituality you know it's um when when everything else has fallen away in those times where there's been nothing left i've always been able to lean in to that faith and um spiritual practice and i've found as i've gone through that process and gotten stronger and stronger with that there are very little conditions in nothing there are no conditions in this world that can destroy you when you are living your life in that way. It's like you're in the world, but not of it, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, what, what you were talking about before, before we asked you to, to probably sing a song for us, but uh, that one one picture I used to love was uh, one of this raging waterfall, uh, you know, making, making this, you know, incredibly loud noise and uh, was you know, a large waterfall that's just uh, water's pouring down this cliff face you know and uh, rumbling and uh, just right beside it in a small branch from a tree is a bird and its nest you know and uh, with baby baby chicks in it as well and uh with, with all that, you know, that raging waterfall behind them, there's this this life, this small yeah. life still there, and, and uh, finding peace, even though this this uh, raging waterfall is is erupting or is is happening behind them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Because I often think that at home. Because we we have a big family of tiny birds, and you don't see them very often anymore. You know, it's only special places that you get those real little. Some of them are like this big; yeah. they're so cute. But it doesn't matter what's going on. Like, there's been a bit of roadworks going on near our place, and you know what kids are like. Sometimes they're fighting. Like anything could be going on, and they just trust. They have faith. They live in that in that little world and nothing nothing can get to them and it's that beautiful um reminder that we get from country you know and from our beautiful wildlife that we can be like that you know we can always um find that peace even even in the middle of all the chaos yeah okay look um before i ask you to sing a song could you probably just touch on probably i don't know uh, is there inspiration or do you have any particular or what inspires the songs or is it just each song is, is different and the inspiration is different for each song? Yeah, I think each song is different, but I definitely have a thread through all of them, um, probably similar to you in that um, I probably wouldn't play music if I didn't think that it could help somebody else. <laughs> You know, like for me, it really is about being of service because I don't really like being up on the stage or being in the 
you know, I, I'm happy to be nothing, you know, I'm, I'm good living a quiet life. And so I say no to a lot more things than I say yes to that for that reason. But the thing that makes me say yes is always, well, maybe there's somebody there tonight or watching or listening that just needs to hear that you can go through the things that I've been through and come out the other side and still live a life of wholeness. And it's never too late to turn that story around. Um, and that's the reason why I go. And I think that message is probably in every song that I, that I write. But um, this one that I'm going to play, I only wrote a couple of months ago. And I'd um, a, couple, a, a few years ago, I'd had that experience where I did kind of reach the peak of, of my career. Like I'd been building towards something for a long time, working in the arts. Yeah. And always with that social justice uh, focus, but as well, um, you know, I had the money and the big job and the accolades and the criticism that comes along with all of that, you know, and I, and I kind of got about a year into it and realised that that life really wasn't for me and that I was, it was bringing out a part of myself that I didn't really like and I was losing that connection to my spirituality that I, my mum really was strong, strong with that growing up, you know. And so I, I remember calling my partner, John, and saying, pack your stuff, we're out of here. <laughs> and within six weeks, we'd left the city, we're living in the bush, and our lives have completely changed. And so I wrote this song probably, um, you know, sometimes I have this experience where I dip my toes back into that old life. Yeah. You know, and I always come out of it feeling so unsatisfied <laughs> and almost empty, yeah. you know, I, and I, I've spent so many years looking for love in all the wrong places as a young person. And I rode that story to as far as you could until you really have to choose life over, over complete self-destruction. Yeah. And then I turned it around and still was looking for love in the wrong places through all of the material things, you know? And so this song is really like, um, yeah, just processing all of that, I guess. Well, yeah, it sounds like a good place to, to, to start. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen to that song. It'd be great. Thank you. Looking for a different kind of freedom I won't stop until the sun goes down Me, I am nothing I grew up at the bottom of a mountain town She told me to home and find yourself I don't have a way back Landmarks of all been blown away now there's just a train track, a dusty track. And I don't care if I have to walk alone, I'll never truly bear this cross on my own. And I got love to share, and I will make my home with the peace of the Lord. Just when I think that I am done, someone will come along and steal my crown. I used to try to snatch it back, but now I light a flame and melt it down. He told me the vision's big enough, it's just that some of us are better than you. I said that people are still hungry. I don't think it's working. Is it working? I don't care if I have to walk alone. I'll never truly bear this cross on my own. And I got love to share. And I will make my home with the peace of the Lord. I keep looking to the world, there's no love in the world left now. I 
Thanks for that song. Uh, that's a blessing. We have a lot of song like that. Uh, a blessing for me, a blessing for others that, that hear it, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I hope it's blessed you as well as you sing it. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that as well. You know? Uh, yeah. I was watching you talk about um, they took the children away. And it was, someone was interviewing you and asking you if you get sick of it. And you were saying, no, it, each time I sing it, it heals me that little bit more. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, look, um, it's been wonderful you know, uh, talking to you today, Lydia. Uh, and, you know, uh, Lydia Fairhall, you know, uh, what can I say? Thank you very much for being uh, part of the Kitchen Table Yarns. And, Thank you. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, hear you again sometime. Uh, yeah. Your music as well. Uh, Thank you so much. It's it's real. I'm so humbled <laughs> to be here doing this with you. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. We'll see you. <laughs> see you. All right. Well, that was another great uh, kitchen table yarn. Uh, with uh, singer-songwriter Lydia Fairhall and uh, sung such a great song, beautiful song about, well it's about being at peace uh, with the Lord, you know, she, she's a woman of faith so um, I just love the way that you know, people express themselves and what, how their music not just helps them but how it helps other people and a little bit little like uh, what I do. So, like I say, uh, that was a great, that was a great um, yarn today. So, um, next month's guest will be uh, Kian, and uh, I'm looking forward to speaking to her as well. And, and what's really good, I think, about uh, these yarns is that uh, we've got you know, plenty of women that we can talk to. And that, that's really good, I think, because, uh, you know, we, we need to balance, balance the, uh, have that balance, you know, the women, women artists, singer-songwriters, as well as men, singer-songwriters. And, uh, you know, we, ne we need to be able to do that. So ne 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 next month, we'll be talking to Kian. And like I said, uh, we'll catch our... Man, in a while, crocodile. A big thank you to Creative Victoria and the Australia Council for the Arts for making this project possible.